Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. My name is Gabriel Lopez and today I will be talking about a book that was listed on Time Magazine's Best 100 English Language Novels from 1923 to 2005. A book so well written, it was adapted into a film in 1975 and won five Academy Awards. The novel I'm talking about is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is a trade book that was written by Ken Kesey in 1962. Before I start discussing the novel, I'm first going to give some background information on the author. Ken Kesey attended the University of Oregon School of Journalism. He was awarded a Woodrow Wilson National Fellowship in 1958 to enroll in the creative writing program at Stanford University, which he did the following year. At Stanford in 1959, Kesey volunteered to take part in a CIA finance study named Project MKUltra. The project studied the effects of psychoactive drugs, particularly LSD, cocaine, mescaline, psilocybin, AMT, and DMT on people. Kesey wrote many detailed accounts of his experiences with these drugs, both during the project and in the years of private experimentation that followed. Kesey was also working on the night shift at the Menlo Park Veterans Hospital. There, Kesey often spent time talking to the patients, sometimes under the influence of these drugs that he had volunteered to experiment with. Kesey did not believe that these patients were insane, but rather that society had pushed them out because they did not fit the conventional ideas of how people were supposed to act and behave. Both his role as a medical guinea pig, as well as his stint working at the state's veteran hospital, inspired him to write One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in 1962. Now I'm going to give a brief overview of the novel. The book is narrated by Chief Bromden, who is a half Indian patient that has been in the Oregon Psychiatric Hospital for 10 years. Bromden pretends to be deaf and dumb and tries to go unnoticed, even though he is six feet, seven inches tall. His worldview is dominated by the fear of what he calls the combine, which is a huge conglomeration that controls society and forces people into conformity. The mental patients who are all male are divided into acutes who can be cured and chronics who cannot be cured. Bromden's story focuses primarily on the antics of the rebellious Randall Patrick McMurphy, who is on the right side of the screen. He faked insanity to serve his sentence for battery and gambling in the hospital rather than at a prison work farm. The patients are ruled by Nurse Ratched, the novel's antagonist. She is a middle-aged former army nurse. She rules her ward with an iron hand and is identified as a woman of great power and control. She also weakens her patients through a psychologically manipulative program designed to destroy their self-esteem. These tactics slowly drain all traces of humanity from her patients. During daily group meetings, she encourages the acutes to attack each other in their most vulnerable places, shaming them into submission. If a patient rebels, he is sent to receive electroshock treatments and sometimes a lobotomy even though both practices have fallen out of favor with the medical community. Bromden's narration explores the ongoing clash between Nurse Ratched's authoritarian rule and conformity versus McMurphy's idea of treating the patients with human dignity and challenging the norms that are set in place. The novel was banned for several reasons. In 1974, five residents of Strongville, Ohio, sued the Board of Education to get the novel removed from classrooms, labeling it pornographic. They also said the novel glorified criminal activity, had a tendency to corrupt juveniles, and contained descriptions of bestiality, bizarre violence, and torture, dismemberment, death, and human elimination. The list goes on and on. In 1975, Randolph, New York, and Alton, Oklahoma moved the book from all their public schools. In 1977, schools in Westport, Maine removed it from all required reading lists. In 1978, Fremont High School in St. Anthony, Idaho banned it and fired the teacher who assigned it. I think you should read it because the novel has many important themes it offers. Some themes include sanity and insanity, social pressure and shame, emasculation and sexuality, and society acting as the combine, a giant force that exists only to oppress the people within it. It is a very interesting and addicting novel, and it's also very enjoyable. If you are interested in anti-authoritarian, anti-bureaucratic, and thought-provoking themes of the novels, such as 1984, Animal Farm, or even those that warn of chaos when order is lost like Lord of the Flies, then this novel is definitely for you.